The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I am Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. If you're watching this show, if you're listening to this show, thank you very much. Please hit that subscribe button. And if you got to have more, then you got to check out that Patreon. It's five bucks a month. It ain't moving. It's staying there for the whole year. And if you sign up for a month, you get a, uh, excuse me, if you sign up for a year, you get a month free. All right. You get the honeydew a day early. You get it ad free and you get it at no additional cost. And if you or someone you know has a story that has to be heard, please submit it to honeydewpodcast at gmail.com. All right. Uh, if you got to have more than that, then you got to check out the Crab Feast, man. The Crab Feast goes back. It's a seven and a half year library. You listen to two episodes a week, it's still going to take you three years to get through the damn thing. All right? Go hit subscribe on that. It's audio only. You're looking for a new podcast? Go listen to my old podcast, The Crab Feast. All right? Fuck The Crab Feast. Five stars. That's the biz. Y'all know what we do over here. We highlight the lowlights. And I always say, these are the stories behind the storytellers. I am very excited to have this guest here on The Honeydew. First time, please welcome Byron Bowers. Welcome to The Honeydew, Byron Bowers. Yeah! Thank been a long y'all. time coming. What it do, honey do? It's been a long time coming. What it do? Shout out to Honey Doll. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, man. It's, it's good to be. Yeah, you look good. I haven't seen you for a while. Wow. Yeah, and I remember your episode. You had a great episode of the Crafties we were talking about out there before, and I wanted to talk to you a little more about it. But before we get into it, um, plug, promote everything, anything you would like, please. At Byron Bowers right now, you can catch me on Facebook. Uh, that was my Instagram, but I do have a Facebook, and it's my name also. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, top comedy special of 22, Byron Bowers. Spiritual nigga, or a spiritual n word if you white, or a spiritual n- if you You're the racist. KKK, uh, and spiritual n word as Daniel Van Kirk would say. Um, it's on Hulu and it's on Disney. Shout out, Shout for out Disney. to DVK too. Yeah, so um, yeah, that's all I have for now. Yeah, follow my old shit and follow my new shit. But you see, your special we were talking about uh, before we recorded, it deals with suicide, depression. So I want to talk about... Transformation, right? Yeah, all of these things. But let's begin with, where are you from originally? Uh, born in Athens, Georgia. Go dogs. We number one right now in the nation. And um, I was raised in Atlanta, uh, Georgia. Um, shout out to Tokyo ATL who made this hoodie. Black-owned companies support black-owned companies, even if you ain't black. You're going to do it anyway through taxes. Through taxes. <laughs> 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 no PPP loans, you know what I mean? Okay. Um, so, yeah, I was raised in, a, in a, uh, Atlanta, Georgia. So I went from a small town to an even, you know, co- co- uh, compared to L.A., a small city, but it was a big, big city for That's Georgia. a big move from Athens to Atlanta? Yeah. Yeah. And your mom and dad together at the time? How old are you when you guys make that move? I remember being like, I did it twice. So I did it like, I was like around five, I think. Five or six years old. And, and then do you I have had brothers to, and sisters? I have a sister also. Okay. Uh, shout out to J- Japronica. What's uh, her name? Japronica. 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 That is a uh, name I have never heard. Have you ever met another Japronica? Well, Japonica is a flower. Oh, Japonica. Japonica is a flower. Okay. A Japanese flower and a flower that they have in the Middle East, but they spelled it wrong. Nah. Yeah. They spelled it so wrong on jer- the birth. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. It was uh, so I was saying it right. <laughs> yeah, you never heard. I was right. pronouncing her name proper, but the flower wrong. Yeah. So, but no, nah, it is. Uh, it is her name, and uh, it's not too many of them because of that that type of. <laughs> There's got to be one. That might be the only one. I think she said she found some other ones and she was mad. She was like, ain't no way. They copying they copying yeah. her because they're younger. <laughs> I'm like, you searched the whole Instagram? And she was like, basically. So uh, Okay, so you, but just that, you and But we have two sister. separate fathers. Okay. Right? Um, that's how abundance works. You know, sometimes the Lord blesses you with 
uh, a woman with multiple uh, fathers. Um, so she's the light skinned child. I'm the dark skinned child. And if we ever got confused by like which father was present, we would do the hand test. Nah. No, nah, okay, we didn't do that. But, you know, it's an old bit I wrote. Like, this, is that my dad? Or that's your dad. But her dad died. Both our dad is dead now. Yeah. All right. So shout out to you. Jump way ahead. I here. don't know who you should shout out to, but um, tell me about. Then when you say dad. something fucked up, you try to make it better, but you don't. Tell me about your dad. Uh shoot, my dad. Uh, as far as what, I think. Tell me about him. What do you know about him? Man, I realized when he died, I don't really, I didn't really know too much about him. No. I was like, what his favorite color? I don't know what his favorite food. You know, you have those thoughts like who So when your parents they split then when you're did you saying when they wasn't you went together. to Atlanta, you were with your just your my mom. mom, yeah. Okay. So they they never But did he come around at all? Did you yeah, have I, I, spend I, I, time I with him? I spent time with him and uh from my memory it was some of the best moments of my life. Tell me about it. Life, yeah, I want to hear I mean? about it. What stands um, out? What do you see in your mind still? I still see like him coming to pick me up. Uh, you know, some of the hugs, because, like, my mom's side, we didn't really hug. And the meals, like, my grandmother, like, cooking, like, you know, they grew food in the yard, and all the food came from the yard, like the eggs. Uh, we had chickens in the back. We had hunting dogs. Um, we would go fishing every Saturday, catch the fish, fry the fish right there on the spot. The rest went to the neighbors. Um Wine came from the wines, the muscadines uh, vine. Corn was shucked, peas were shucked, uh, cantaloupe, watermelon. You know, it's honey like, do. yeah, honey, honey, do you know? <laughs> but it's it's like you realize when you're older, like, oh, this is what this is like abundance, and you know, um, you know, life was like everything you needed was provided. Like, you want a snack, you go outside. Pick up two pecans with your hand, snap them, pow, you eating. You sitting down with family, like, it was just a very, like, peaceful time. Um, and then um, my dad worked for the power company. He would go to work every day. Uh, very smart dude. Had me in the YMCA and, like, all these extracurricular activities. Um, we would hunt. Um, they put guns in our hands to teach us to feed ourselves, you know, at, at a young you age. Hunting? At that age. At that age, you just learn how to do uh, air rifles. Oh, okay. So you just learn, you train yourself how to shoot cans, right? And then we would fish also. Uh, remember going out on the boat, staying out overnight fishing and just catching a bunch of catfish and brim. Southern, like, you know, freshwater fish. Uh, it definitely was a, a more simple life. Uh, and the Christmas was good and... It was just warm. I just remember. Um, and then, like, I ended up moving to Atlanta, and it was just, like, all the normalcy just went. It just changed. Because now with my mother, like, you don't realize you're older. Like, these people are, like, 22, yeah, you know, like, you 25. You're like, damn. Yeah. And uh, my mom was a young mom, just moved to the city, young, good-looking lady. And life was just, like... With two young young kids, you know, um, trying to survive, and that came with its struggles. And you would bounce around from place to place, and I'll be at the Bronner Brothers, uh, which is like this. Bronner Brothers is this black owned hair company, and they had a school. And my mom went to this this hair school, and we would be there as kids. Just I remember being on the chair, just spinning around, and. You know, getting she hit me with a brush one time. Boom! Stop, <laughs> stop spinning around. You know, so uh, it was just a different life. You know, um, and I think my first depression was around that time, like six and seven. Really? Yeah. What are you feeling? Just the the polar opposites of like, are you longing to get back to what dad and I just could and tell. And is it his family as well? Like your grandparents on that side yeah. as well? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I could just. Because really were probably know. only in their 40s or 50s. You know, that's still young. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I didn't, I can't tell exactly what it was. I just know when I saw, I just 
just felt something wasn't right. And I remember seeing a picture of myself and I just looked down at one one time, you know. Um, it was just a different just a position. And then I had to go back because DFAT's Department of Family and Children's Services got involved at one point. With your mom or your dad? With my mom. Mm -hmm. So we had to go back, and I went back to live with my grandmother for a while. And then when that happens, does your sister go, go with and her live. dad? So now you two are separated also. Me and my sister separated. My sister. Yeah, so you're losing your mom and your sister. Yeah, my sister goes to stay with my uh, aunt and my uncle. You know, R.I.P. to my auntie. Uh, and they had like uh, two daughters. And my aunt was a teacher and my uncle was a truck driver. So she went to a stable home to live. And then I went to stay with my grandmother. And this is your dad's mom? My mom's mom. Mom's mom, mom. Who's okay. the person my mom probably thinks doesn't love her. And that's where you're going. And that's where I'm going. And the real like? brute like strict I remember being in bed and the Cosby show coming on you know um that's eight o'clock right? yeah yeah like <laughs> yeah that's not late you only show. drink milk you only can drink milk this thick ass milk came in this yellow carton like no sodas no tea um switches you know um yard clothes come from yard sales I remember having some big ass pony shoes I had to wear. Ponies, yeah. Uh, and you couldn't get, I mean, the food was like massive. Like, I mean, big ass fries and big hot dogs and like soups and like still warm, like food, like peanut butter came in a big ass can like that. You know what I mean? White. Cause my grandmother worked at the, um, in the projects at the daycare center. So I didn't know at the time you getting like that type of, Food, you know, um, but grandma had nine kids come to find out. And you don't know, like, you talking about generational trauma. My dad, mother, and my dad parents were together and had five. My mom's family was nine kids out of the mom's project. Was one of nine kids. One of the youngest of nine kids who father had another family. So they getting raised by like, uh, like grandma probably was bitter and and. So your dad, wait, your grandfather, your mom's dad had nine kids with your mom's mom, and another family. How many fucking kids he had with that family? I never met him. You don't know. So you actually have blood siblings that you have not met. Yeah, because you don't speak. They never spoke Got his it. name. Got it. Yeah. You know, um, and yeah, it was a cold, that was a cold place, you know, uh, yeah, that's just what it was. Now, when you're living with your mom's mom at that time, is there anyone else in the house with her or is it just the two oh, of yeah, you? Oh yeah, of course. It's, uh, my cousin, my, like two aunties that was there. And so I mean, it's a crowded it's, house. It's crowded and everybody's young and like. You know, it's, it's, it, it, it's loud, and I would have babysitters sometimes. That's why I learned how to walk home from school and, like, and, you know, in this, this cross the street of the crossing guard, and then I would go the shorter way. Because I'm like, why would I go the long way when I can go the shorter way and all these things? And, like, that's the place in my grandma's back room where I got my dick sucked by my babysitter. You know what I mean? What? How old were you? I was, like, 10. You were 10? How old was she? Probably like 13 or 15, you know. And she sucked your dick? Yeah. And I fucked her a few times. What? At 10? Yeah. But I knew what sex was. Already. How'd you know what sex was? Because my dad's, my granddaddy on my dad's side has an outside family also. <laughs> okay. But they, uh, and my dad and uncle was young dudes. And my dad was in the Navy. So when we would go fishing, I, we would look at nudie magazines. And I've seen my dad. My dad had a nice rotation of chicks. Um, and you picked uh, this up that early too, huh? Yeah, I think it's part of the thing. Like, I, I remember looking out my bedroom, and it was a mirror on the closet door, and my I could see into my dad room. 
And I seen him like kind of like fuck a lady, and he was like, you know, I ain't want you to be gay. You know, back in those days, they would Wait. do they would do things. He left the door open so you could see him fuck see, a woman because yeah, be. in his mind that wouldn't that for sure would not make you gay. Look, I'm just trying to understand. Yeah, I mean that's one of the that things. I have it correct. That's one of the things. I right? hear you. Yeah, that's I'm not judging. I'm just I want to make well, sure. Well, it's understand just a it. different time. That's right. a different mentality also. Like, Well, I don't know. I don't know. That's the problem. Right. Of course you don't. You're 10. Well, I mean, even now, even now, I don't know. What do you mean? Well. Well, do you think that uh, uh, watching heterosexual no, I mean, sex No, makes... I mean, like, overall, this is what I mean by that statement. Let me, okay. let me be more specific. When you're taught uh, uh, certain things, by uh, a community or a person and you grow up that way and then you branch out and learn certain other things, not just the gay thing, but like how money works, all all type of stuff. You start to question like other things you would you learn. And because my dad was schizophrenic later on and we found out that he might have been schizophrenic. The whole time. The whole time. <laughs> yeah. My existence is just like a blur, you know, a part of it. Okay, so your dad's doing, it's questionable shit, yeah. Well, it, now, yeah, you know, don't do that, but I just have to look but at- But also, if he's schizophrenic, the, it, the, that is a mental issue that makes sense why some things- were done differently than most people do them. I have a, a schizophrenic yeah. cousin. And let me tell you, he does not operate like we operate. But now you have the question, is it a schizophrenic thing or is it a macho thing? Like, that's the questions you ask. It's, it's probably all of that. Yeah. It's probably a jambalaya of yeah. that shit. A potpourri of old ass, like, macho bullshit, schizophrenia, yeah. maybe religion thrown in there, oh, too. You know what I mean? There. It's a whole mind. We fuck. are church people, you know. Uh, in Athens, I think, last time I checked, it was, the population is 100,000, and it's 100 Christian churches. Nah, is that right? Like, like yeah, alone, just 100. Um, but, um, yeah, man, it was just a different... Different exist like there. Oh, wait, we're hold on. We we got off on a tangent. So the babysitter. Look, man, I do shrooms. So this is. <laughs> I, I, it's okay. That's the way this show goes. Yeah, you know, you need back you need the people to be present during I the don't show. Want to fucking? I do not want. Oh yeah, to, so the babysitter gloss over. Yeah. You, so you also, you you lost your virginity at ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I had to. Let's talk I had about to keep that. It, a secret until who was the babysitter? Was she a relative of somebody? Was she a neighbor? Just was a, she a just a uh uh like a friend of the family mm -hmm. that was uh watching me. Um and you know I remember I was telling my girl and she was like, You molested and I did a joke, like, how's I molested? And she sucked my dick and she was mad, like like why can't men say that they were molested? I'm like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? We fucked. We used to look at a book. I remember what the pussy looked like. And she sucked my dick. How was I molested? So it was one of those um, those things that you don't understand affects you until you like an adult. Do you think you were molested? Do you think that girl molested you? That I don't. Because when you hear other molest stories, you like, God. Listen, I've sat here Damn. and listened to so many of That's them. That's what I'm and, saying. And here's what I want to say. And I don't want to downplay anything. I do I, know she said, because my dad had a reputation. My dad had a lot of women. She said, I want you to do to me what your dad do to them chicks. And then she put my dick in her mouth. And it was such a warm How'd feeling. How'd she know what your dad did? my she dad had him. a reputation. My mom got seven sisters. My dad had a book of women. Of women. He, oh, he kept photos of them? Oh, yeah. Something? He kept photos. Oh, he kept evidence? Yeah. Was it evidence? Receipts. <laughs> I guess they call them receipts <laughs> he now. He call whatever Show you want. Receipts. Depends on the, what side you're on. <laughs> if you're looking, it's evidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're bragging, it's receipts. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. All right. Okay. 
So Yana, that was a receipt. Those girls, uh, this babysitter, this girl does this, and you said she was thirteen. She had to be between thirteen and fifteen. And I'm so she's not an adult. I don't get gauged by the smell. She's not eighteen, nineteen. She's not an adult. I don't. I. I don't know. I don't know if that's molestation or if that's just two young a, kids being it's a, curious. It's a. It was to me. It was Sex a, at ten is to me. Early. It was a young, young woman, probably about to go in junior high or whatever. Eighth grade or just hormone. It, to me, it had to be somebody with raging hormones to make those type of decisions. I mean, it, and from ten, the feel, ten is from young. how it felt. You know what I mean? Ten is young. Um. I don't know. I, I'm not an expert. I don't know what the definition I think 10, is there. I would say t- ten is is uh is young, but I I think my granddad was nine or something. But ten, Obviously, okay. this is a tradition in in the community that we don't talk about. Back. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Ten years old. Okay, so when's the next time you have sex? Was it a while after that? Yeah, oh wow! Officially, probably like I think eighteen. Okay, in the woods. In the woods. At basketball camp. Yeah. How'd you get away with that? Just we was ran on a basketball go. We was on a basketball uh uh summer trip and we was in I think Tennessee somewhere and my homeboy was just telling me what to say to this chick and she was down and she drove me and this uh this other guy to the woods and we went off in the woods and I remember we was about to fuck and she was like, We gotta be careful. Cause I've been caught arrested for fucking here before. <laughs> that she tells you that right before. Yeah, I've been arrested. Yeah. <laughs> and when those lips cracked open, the smell, <laughs> the smell from that was so bad. I'll bet that when I finished, he still because the nigga ain't gonna quit until he busts. Ain't nothing nasty until you bust. You realize that? Okay. Uh, my When I got in the car, my homeboy was like, don't touch me. <laughs> uh, but when he, uh, did, you know, the Simpsons were popular when we were younger. Mm-hmm. So when she said, I've been Still arrested popular. for doing this before, all I heard in the wood, through the woods was like, ah Yeah. He did yeah. on the Nelson, uh, Nelson's laughs. But, um, and then, uh, funny story. We get back and we get we show up late. And coach mad, like, what the fuck y'all was? And he was like, Beetle, Beetle went and got some pussy. Coach, like, you did what? He's like, um, he got some pussy. Like, well, from who? Who gave you who gave you some pussy? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this chick in the in the chick what? And we met a chick at the store. The chick in the white Honda? Nah, nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, coach, be the fuck the girl you were trying to fuck. Nah. And uh, he was like, son, I'm going to tell your mama. And I was scared. He was like, she had AIDS, son. Nah. Oh, man. And my heart dropped. And he, and he was like, I'm just playing. Oh, man. <laughs> My God, dude, I was nervous. <laughs> but also, if she had been arrested for fucking there, she could have ate. <laughs> she very Man, well. You talking about have sleep? <laughs> you talking about them like roll over like <laughs> nights? The whole oh, team giving yeah. you shit. Oh, shit. Shout out to the shout out to the team. <laughs> All right. Um. So ten years old, that happens. You're already uh, you're living at your grandmom's, and was and that's very strict living. You said you're going to church too, or you like are you not with that not with that particular grandma, but it was just like certain rules. You know what I mean? Um, uh, grandma was not a person that smiled a lot. You know uh, that I remembered until I got older, but um, she's real. She was real strict and. She was dealing with, you know, whatever she was dealing with, which I didn't know at the time. But I was like, damn, grandma mean. Um, so, but it definitely was like strong enough to affect my mom in a certain way. And then what happens? Do you go back to your mom? I ended up going from back there? to my mom. And I, that's when. How long? How long were you at your grandmoms? 
I don't remember. Like a year, a couple of years? Probably a, a couple minute. of years. Yeah. But that my sister know more than me because at one point a time my mom was sick. My mom had a stroke. So I had to stay down there to while my mom, because my mom couldn't talk on the side of her face and she couldn't walk. And um, and I remember like my mom like being able to just move like a little part of her mouth. And I think I remember my sister like like getting some slob off her mouth, the nastiest shit I ever seen at the time. You know, and uh, so I guess they think I couldn't handle that. And, you know, my sister had to be there with my mom and, like, you know, bless her heart, but, like, help, you know, help her with that stuff. And, uh, you know, it was tough. But I went back, and we we ended up in Brandon Hills uh, apartments, and that was just a wild ride. That's when you start getting into sports and, like, being bullied and, um, I remember I showed up and the guys were sitting on the car and they was like, they pointed at my shoes and they was like, there they go right there. I had just got some new shoes, black with the little red tips on it. And they was like, come over here, come over here. And I went over there and they was like, nigga, don't make no Jordans. Those are some stadiums. Those are some stadium <laughs> shoes. Stadiums. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know what, that was the day I found out what Jordans was. Cause I didn't know. Oh, you had no idea. I had no idea. You know what I mean? Cause my, my, I had to, my mom would make me wear like church shoes and like, like I would dress country as a little kid. Cause my mom would dress me up and stuff. I guess she wanted to see a mm -hmm. uh, young man wear like fake snakeskin dress shoes and shit like that. You know, so um, that's that's was me becoming a part of of Atlanta, living in Mountain Grove. Now, I had a reputation. I moved to Mountain Grove when I first got back to to Atlanta. And I had a reputation of being scared of pussy. Why? Because it was an incident. Was it an AIDS scare? Well, me. <laughs> nah, this was, this was young. I'm still young. Now I'm like 11. Mm. You know, and me, uh, my best friend at the time, and his other dude, we all, you know, this is when you were just breaking empty apartments and doing all type of fun fun stuff. But it was this lady over, it was this chick. She was, she was older. She was like 15, 16. And she came over and they ran a train on her. And they was like, you want to, you want to. I never had, had, no one I know was, had any childhood like this. What do you mean? Like. Nobody. I always had bad looks with trains anyway. Uh, <laughs> I've never even been asked to be on a train. Look. Not first, middle, last, bubble. But it was weird for me because after what I went through and they didn't know, seeing a dude get in a girl and they like pump her like, you know. I mean, we like kids, so they hit like kids, like just doing all this shit. And then they one day be like, move, nigga, and push off, and he'd get in and do all that shit. And they'd be like, you want something else? And I'm like, nah. And I was watching, I remember I was watching the uh, the Rocky with the Russian dude. Mm -hmm. Drago. Yeah. yeah, Drago in it. And I'm watching it, and this is all going on in the background and shit. And then, uh, you know, Eric, shout out to Eric, was like, nigga, you, you scared of pussy. And when I would walk around the neighborhood, be like, this nigga scared of pussy. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's a hey, this nigga scared of pussy. Terrible to walk around the sidewalk. He's scared of pussy. <laughs> oh, Mind you, God. we had the booty man also. What is that? In Atlanta, it was a guy named Wayne Williams who. Are we allowed to say his full name? Yeah, because he was in he was in prison. He went to prison for murdering and raping, supposedly or having sex with young black men. It was a black dude. Okay, I didn't know about this. So guy. Atlanta, moving back to Atlanta was a very dangerous place. So below all the homophobia stuff was deep anyway, because you had this going on. Uh, and this guy was just out there killing young black yeah, men. So young black he, gay men or young black men? They said it was young black gay men. Okay. Uh, but but at the time, you don't really think about that. You just know, like, oh, if you walked in the woods, the booty man might be in the woods. You know what I mean? Um, and the reason I say that because the apartment complex we lived in had some woods that led to the next apartment complex. Now, we end up moving into the other apartment complex. But I didn't know this apartment complex didn't get along with this apartment complex. Are there rivals? So when I was, when we all met up one day, they were just elbowing me. Mm, mm, mm. Like, 
you you with them now, you know, because we didn't have gangs, so to speak. You could be like two streets, two streets or one side of the street could beef with another side of the street type stuff. Um, and then I ended up in this in this Brandon Hill condominiums, kind of which, which was huge. Uh, and that's when like all my skateboarding and stuff started. When I saw Tony Hawk for the first time. Yeah. And I would skateboard on these, like, we had all these hills and stuff. And that shit was fun for a while. Shout out to Tony Hawk. Sat right there in that chair. Yeah. I met him. I I, I didn't, uh, did I officially meet him? But whatever, I was at the Oscars last year and he was there. Oh, yeah? And I was like, is that is that Tony Hawk? And I was like, damn, that's Tony Hawk. It was good, dude. But I never seen nothing like that before. So- you said you you mentioned first time you were depressed was that five six. What happens when do you when do you start really battling depression? And you don't and really know what suicidal it, thoughts. You don't know what it is, right? But I'm saying, looking back now, when do you really start? I don't know. I mean, I got cuts. I remember cutting myself in like either you, junior high or high school. You did try to commit suicide, or you were just cutting? I, this was one cut I did at one time. And I was like, that shit hurt, <laughs> and. uh I was like, I used a butter knife too. Were a butter knife. Yeah. So I was saw, I was just doing this shit. Sawing yourself with a butter knife. What are you? You know. Well, good. I'm glad, I'm glad you did not have a cut proper. Yeah. Well, if I would have used a regular knife. Because my girl got like a bunch of skulls. Her and her friends, they got a bunch. Oh, really? Yeah. And I was like, I because they use proper knives. I, but you're doing this for a while, and then it, it's like... Oh, yeah, no. You forget. Like, you want it to... Whatever it was, I know it worked, because I don't remember, right, what I was going on. But, I mean, you getting bullied. Like, I'm trying to play sports. That wasn't working. Uh, you know, pops on drugs. Uh, not fitting in. Um, It was a lot, you know. Being, being, being broke... You know, um, leaving the band, having, you know, I was in the band in fifth grade and my mom was always complaining about the instrument. I'm reading this instrument and you ain't even, you don't even play it a lot. And what then was it? it was a trumpet. I was second chair in trumpet. Yeah. That's something to brag about. <laughs> See, the best get first chair and then it goes in the line like that. You know, I was second chair. But there was only three trumpet players. So... By default, I was the second best <laughs> trumpet player. But I remember I, um, these all these wind instruments, and I remember I made somebody laugh. I knew I could disrupt a whole band, and I waited till we was playing, and I did some shit, and the whole band just started. It just fucked up everything. And I remember the teacher was like, uh, "I either could tell your mom what you're doing, or you could like." You know, stop. And I just left. I just left the band. So tell me. That's about how powerful ass whoopings are. Tell me about your dad passing away. How was? How were you when he passed? How old was I? Yeah. Wow. I don't know. That's when Honey Boy came out. When did he pass? Like twenty nineteen. That's recent. Yeah. What happened? Um. He was property of Wait, a st- you don't know how old you were three years ago? I don't keep up with my age. Get the fuck out of here yeah, right now. I know. I don't keep up with my age. You're full of shit. I don't keep up with my age. Uh, Get out of here. Yeah, my grandma don't know how she is, how old she is, and my mom barely know how old she is. It's, it's a tradition. What's your What's your range? Somewhere between what and what? What would you um, say you are? Beard or no beard? <laughs> Be- right now, what, what do you uh, I'll say I'm 25 to 60. <laughs> Like if you ca- <laughs> twenty five to sleep. if you catch me sleep sometimes I definitely look like I'm like sixty years old. <laughs> uh, oh, you got a rage, man! I tell you, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, your dad passing away. Man, you know it was crazy. Um, I met this. Uh, I was in a movie called Honey Boy. And we doing this uh, press run. Is that the one that was shot in Baltimore? No, nah, this was uh, this was shot in L.A. with Shia LaBeouf and like oh, yeah. everybody, right? And you know, we doing a, like an Oscar campaign. I ain't never been a part of no shit like this before in my life. And um, 
you know, we're doing red carpets and all type of shit, and we, like, exhausted. This is like a tour. Doing press, you show up, you get outfits, all this stuff. And um, we landed. We was tired. And, um, me and my girl, we couldn't wait to come home. And we landed on LAX, and I turned on my phone, and I got a message from my cousin. And uh, he was like, um, hey, man, they got your dad in Macon. Um, he coded it five times, um, and they said they're not going to bring him back to uh to to resuscitate on no more. And I'm turning to my girl like, what the hell is coded? And I Google it and it's like his heart stopped. And I was like, oh shit. So um I called him and he told me uh um that they all finna drive up to the hospital now. So me and my girl went home, uh ate, pe- repacked and we went down got right back. Got right back on LAX, you know, and you know how brutal that is. And we get to Georgia probably like midnight or some shit. So you come off of, of this whirlwind press tour for Oscar Miller riding a high literally to turn your phone on and get news that yeah. your father's dying. Yep. And I um I call the airport. I'm like, yo, we need one of them death tickets. Like somebody <laughs> dying type shit. On the, <laughs> whatever they call it. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> You know, we get one of them discounted. Yeah, they'll, discounted they'll t- death tickets. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and if they've been like, no, like y'all just saying it because he's black. <laughs> Not just like, uh, but um, I remember I put on an all black hoodie, you know, um, and got down, and it took us to three o'clock when we got there. Three o'clock, and I remember walk. It's video somewhere of me walking through this sort of hospital, an all black hoodie, and it looks. Cray hood up and everything and it just looks crazy because I'm just at peace and I have to accept like um damn like this is this is it this could be it so anything I gotta say I gotta say it now and this probably goes back to what I told on on Crab Feast um it was one point I didn't see my dad for seven years and I was angry at him and then I look back over my childhood and I realized like when I was with him, I had the best times. And I like he I realized he was a great father. He just had his mental illness and the the drugs and stuff took over. Um and I wanted to tell him that in person. So I went down, flew down to, uh and drove to Athens. And then me and my sister went to visit my dad for the first time in like seven years. We just my aunt gave me the address. And we showed up at his house after uh, eating dinner. Um, I was excited to see him. I ain't even finished my dinner with my aunt. I had a steak, mashed potatoes. I put it into the uh box, put it under the seat. And I remember driving to his house and telling my sister, like, yo, back in. You know, if anything happened, I want you to, you know, hit the gas. Get, and get the, the fuck, fuck out. Get the fuck out of there. Don't <laughs> worry about me. Yeah. So... Like I'm prepping this like it's some what type of drug deal. Yeah, cause he's paranoid, which means I'm paranoid. I don't know what he's gonna do, and I'm already yeah, paranoid. Yeah. Cause I had always thought like this person can kill me too, even though that's my dad. I'm like, you know, uh, it's a thing when you're from the hood, like the hood or whatever can bring you down. And this is gonna be my downfall. So we pull up, and it's like the hood, the hood is of the hood looking places, run down and. And it was like an old dude outside with no shirt on and a skull cap. And that was him. And I was like, damn, he's sitting outside. And that's when I was like back in. And she, we backed in and we sitting in the car, like right in front of him. And I'm looking at him through the rearview mirror. And my sister's like, damn, you ain't going to get out the car? And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Because I'm like thinking we going to go together. You know what I mean? Uh <laughs> That's not her dad. No, though. no, it ain't her dad. <laughs> her <so>. dad yeah. <laughs> I'm like, damn, yeah. So I get out and then he he say he see her and she get out the car and he was like, you know, this is the country. I'm like, y'all come on in. You know what I mean? And she left the car running. And when he said that, he she was like, shit, you know, I gotta cut the car off. And he was like, I hope y'all like white people, because John's here. And we and my sister was like, who the fuck is John? I don't know no John. And we went in and it was Elton John playing on this little stereo system. Remember those radios that had like the five disc changers in them? Yep. He had a, a box set of Elton John's uh, CDs and he was just playing the whole box set. So we go in and it's like meat, like the, the, all the, the appliances are unplugged. 
um, because he don't trust the elect- electricity or nothing like that except the radio, and it's no lights on, so the, all that is naturally lit, and it's a chair like you you're sitting, and it's a, a love seat over here, so my sister go for the chair. Right, that's a smart thing to do. So mm-hmm. she, she ain't got to sit around nobody, and she sit down. He like, that's my seat, and she get up. She like, oh, yeah. and she got it. man, and I started laughing, and I go sit beside him. He comes sit across from us, and he start packing cigarettes, and he's like, you want some? You know, you want a cigarette? And I was this like, this is after a seven year. Yeah, this is after seven after years, and I was like, I don't smoke. And he he packs a cigarette and he takes it. And he light it and he look at us like like an interrogation style. And he smokes, and he he chew, it's like he chewing the smoke, and I'm like, this shit is weird. Why are you why are you chewing chewing the smoke? And um and I'm thinking it's like Pope in the cigarettes or something, whatever the fuck. Uh, and um he started asking us these these questions, and I'm talking to him and asking him how he doing, but the music's still blaring. So he's basically like yelling at each other. And then uh, this is so eerily similar to my schizophrenic cousin's place when I go over. Yeah, and he like um, he like uh, he asked me about a person like a honey doll. You know, that's why I said honey doll beginning. Honey dolls are another schizophrenic cousin we have in the family. And I was like, I never seen him before. And he was like, I show you who she is. And he get up and leave. And me and my sister look at each other. And at that moment, I realized I didn't plan. I didn't make a plan for the house. So I started to tell her, look, if he come out with like a gun or some shit, yeah. you know, he come out with a photo album and he was like, she's in there. And we look and it's these photo albums and it's all the best. I mean, I'm seeing life before crack, right? Mm. So you see these photos, especially in, in black communities and how it was families and all these tight knit units and his family members I'd never seen before. Then there's pictures of my mom and my dad, like at the prom at the high school dances and shit I never seen. And like, I'm getting like misty eyed and, and my sister never seen these photos either, you know? So she's like, you got any other photos of my mom? He's like, yeah, turn, turn the pit, turn, keep turning. And then she turns and it's just naked women. And it's like, Ooh, but we don't. And I'm, and I'm grabbing a leg. I'm doing a leg like this. Right. Cause I don't want him to snap or no shit like that. And I don't know if she's aware or how to how to act in front of like crazy motherfuckers. So she's asking like, "Oh, that's a nice lady. Like, where did you meet her?" And he's like, well, "I met her at church, you know." And he's just going through this whole. He know where he met all these women down to the T. He remember their name and everything. And it's so crazy to listen to somebody you think is a certain way actually their intelligence and um. At one point, we thought, long story short, we thought, he's like, if you keep going, you're going to see my favorite picture. And I thought it was going to be a picture of my mom. And we got scared, and we we turned, and it wasn't a picture of my mom, but it was a picture of my dad in the same position. Like, the women was all spread eagle on their back, le- holding their legs up, and then my dad was in the same position, holding his dick with two hands. And, <laughs> and the whole time, rocket man. Yeah. It's like a weird That's going thoughts on in the because <laughs> my, it's my sister looking at this shit. It's his favorite picture, by the way. But it's my sister looking at these women, and I'm sitting next to my sister. Like, I know me and my dad perversion, but now I got my sister here. And then my it's my dad holding his dick with two hands, and I gotta think like, can I hold my dick with two hands? <laughs> like it's like it's a moment of like, damn, did I get? Because most dudes are taller than their dad. My dad's still taller than me by an inch, and I'm like, damn, did I get shorted twice? You know, <laughs> twice. And then we yeah. like we all <laughs> laughing. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> That's my favorite picture. I love that. His favorite. And but he happy, mm-hmm. and I I never seen him so happy before. Honestly, in that picture, the way he's smiling and his joy, and um, he could have been high on weed or something. Well, you but got that kind of dick, you should be smiling. Nah, I know, right? And um, and that's when I was like, oh, since the tension is broke, that's when I'm gonna tell him how proud you know how proud I yeah. am to be his son. And I was like, Dad, I got something to tell you. 
uh, and he just looked at me and my sister, and he just started shaking his head. And I was like, um, I wanted to let you know uh, that I had these moments when I thought you were bad, but I realized, you know, that you were a good father this whole time. And he was just like, look at my sister, and he was like, man, I appreciate it, but I can't. I can't fuck your sister. And my sister get up. I'm like, well. That was his response to what you said? Yeah, he was like, she was like, well, good seeing you again, Mr. Bowers. And she headed toward the door. And um, I started to get up. And um, I was like, nah, it ain't about, I don't know what that about. I don't even know where that shit came from. <laughs> and he was started shaking ass. his head. Like, like, I can't. He like, I can't believe you turned out like this. You know? After you know you you, you graduated from college and everything, you and you pimping and your own sister, and then that's when I like start. Now I'm triggered, so I'm getting mad. Like, no, you don't hear what the fuck I'm saying, and I started to yell, and then I'm starting to cry, cause it hit me at that moment. Like, oh shit, he never gonna know how I feel about him. And then my sister ended up grabbing me, like, come on, let's go, and we got in the car, and I just, I just. Bald. Yeah. And I was just spent. And I remember reaching under my seat and grabbing the steak with my hand and just eating it like it's like like a caveman. So fast forward, uh, we in the hospital with my girl, my grandma. How let me ask you this. How long from that moment to hospital now? How many I wanna say that's like gotta years? be 2013, 2014. So six six years? Yeah. Five, six years. So um by this time, I done did mushrooms and everything, so I've learned to communicate with him when he has his episodes now. Uh, so we get in the room, and uh, I show up with this white lady, or well, it's really, but to everybody else, she's some white lady, and she's there with me. And Isn't that funny that she's Israeli, but to them, she's a white Is that wild to her that she's considered a white lady? I think she understands being this But the first time, now. you're like, oh, wait. It's wild to me because my friends code switch when they're around her. They be like, yeah, nigga, what's up? And then she'll walk in the room and they'll be like, good to see you again. Get into her all corporate and shit. And I'm like, what the corporate. fuck? I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Because I still say nigga around and everything. And um, they, they don't, they're not aware they're doing it. That's how crazy it is. But, you know, um, we end up playing uh, Elton John in the room. But my grandmother's not a fan of Elton John, so she started playing gospel. So it's two different sounds blaring over. But when I walked in the room, my dad, like, he opened his eyes. Even after all that? The hospital he did? Yeah, the hospital. He opened wow. his eyes. He was, he was. You said he coded five times. And yeah. Gonna... And he was out. And then he was on the machine breathing mm -hmm. hard. And he opened his eyes. And then he tried to, like, like move toward me, like, lean, actually lean this way. And I remember grabbing, grabbing his hand. Um and looking through his his uh soul, through his pupils into his soul and um and being able to communicate with him and tell him that I love him and I told him that I'll take it from here as far as I can go. Um and you did everything right and there's no no reason to apologize. He lived a great life. That's what I told him. That's nice. And um That's nice to give somebody that before they go. And um, you know, we was there with him and he kept trying to move and and stuff. And then I felt like like I never felt nothing like this, like a um you know how you feel static with balloons? Mm -hmm. Like a very strong static, mm -hmm. yeah. In my uh in my hands up to my and it and it rolls up to my elbows like it got hot and then up to my shoulders and it was tingling like the sleep feeling and then going into a burn and um you know i was just present enough to like feel that transcend and then i told the uh i told everybody he, he's passing on now i was like i could feel it and um they rang the nurse and the nurse came in they was like the machine said he's still alive, and then it just went like that. 
And I was like, he not, as, as I was saying, I was like, he's not, they was checking his vitals. I was like, I could feel him. I could feel him right now going through me. And he went like right there. And a lot of anger I had at the moment. Went with it. Went, went with it. Good. And um, I had to tell a mother that her child was gone, which is hard to do, you know. Um, and then see, and then see them out. But it was a very spiritual moment to have, and that was the second time that happened. Um, because my grandfather was in a coma, and I showed up, and I'm named after him. And my mom was like, "Come say goodbye to your your granddaddy." And he, when I grabbed his hand, he came out of his coma. Did he really? You the coma whisperer, Byron. And I realized the night my dad passed while I'm sitting there, cause my grandfather was 67 when he died, and my dad was 64. And I was like, "Oh shit, I'm next." <laughs> That's the <laughs> you. Well, you are next. I mean, yeah. even if you live to be 105, you're still next because yeah. you're the next one. And there's no heirs. Mm -mm. And I'm named after. I'm a third. I'm the third. Do you want children? Yeah. Yeah. You do. Yeah. You better get what's started. The point? You could be sixty. What's the we point? Uh, what's the point? <laughs> what's the point of? I agree. Doing. That's what I. I was, that's why I am. I told my girl, I ain't trying to like, what up, get old and just eat expensive dinners. That shit sounds so boring. Yeah. Um. But yeah, man. Um. That was a very, very spiritual moment. I'm um, glad you had that. You made it. A lot of people don't get to have that. Yeah. We made it in time. He held on. And uh, and so much was going, so much Hollywood shit was going on that it was a moment to touch down and have a real moment. And yeah. then I left there and went to, to back to Toronto to do the comedy festival. And it was some of the darkest hour that helped probably shape the special hour. But I actually talked more about the death and stuff like that. Yeah. Dude. So after talking about all this, I told you before we recorded this your first time here, I wanted to ask you advice you give to your 16-year-old self. Now, after what we've talked about and the things you've said here, what advice would you go back and looking on it and give yourself? That's tough. Um, that's a tough thing to do because everything that happened kind of shaped and I always followed my instincts. But I would say go bigger. Um, and it's all for a reason. It's all for a reason, but enjoy still enjoy these in the enjoy these moments and learn how to deal with be more present with the, the family. Cause just a lot of skill, relationship skills and stuff I didn't develop. And I always thought family was bad until I was like twenty one. Yeah. And then wait till you get to be a dad, and then that shit hits you a different way. And yeah, because you, you got to relive. Back. I yeah. heard you got to relive. It everything. never stops. It never stops. So then you're gonna be a grandfather. Then you got crossed. new shit. Then you got new shit. Yeah. So it's funny because when I was when I was 19, I was working a job I didn't like that everybody thought I should stay at, and I was depressed at that job. Um, what was it? I worked at uh, Bell South, which is the phone company oh, yeah, at the yeah. time. Mm -hmm. But it's funny, I was doing the same job my dad was doing. He worked for the right? power company. I worked for the thing, you know what I mean? So I'm like, oh, this is how you end up on drugs in a, in a situation like this. But I looked in the mirror and saw, in a crazy way, a 2014 version of myself. Like a badass version of myself. Like a, a look like an entertainer, black leather, black glass, black hat. And he was like, what the fuck you doing? You bigger than this. And it, was, it went away that fast. So that's why he said if you can go back in time, it's like I felt the version of that yeah. has already happened, you know. And I think we do have those capabilities to, to do that spiritually to ourselves, you know. This is a great episode, dude. Thank you. See Thank that? you. You didn't even know what you were going to talk about, you said. There you go. Um, plug everything you want to plug again. The special, all of it, please. Hulu, right now. For, uh, go on Hulu if you're in Australia somewhere. It's on Disney Plus. Spiritual nigga. 
or spiritual N word. Is that really on Disney Plus? And, and with that title. And uh, oh, you know what? <laughs> they t- they just made it spiritual. <laughs> oh, by the time you get to Australia, they just made it spiritual. <laughs> you know what's funny <laughs> that you might not catch, like people might not catch. The they had uh, in subtitles they had nigger. Because I casually really? say nigga, and they had nigga, and I was like, oh, you got to change that shit. Did you tell them? Yeah, we caught it in time. Because I caught it, a friend of mine did a show, and they did it for his, and it looked like two black people being racist to each other. You know what I mean? So, uh, I, I tell me, send me, if you're in Australia or if you're in New Zealand, send me what it sounds like. I would have got like a oh, dude yeah, yeah, dubbed yeah, yeah, yeah. with their voices over it. You know, I doubt it. It's English. Yeah, but it's like, it's like either way, check it out. Check it out just for the fun of it. You know what I mean? Um, and then I'm on Instagram, um, also uh, at Byron Bowers. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Uh, as always, RyanSickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all social media. We will talk to you all next week. Week.